We'll go ahead and call our meeting to order, please. Okay, we'll go ahead and call our meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Simpson County Fiscal Court. And uh, we'll begin this meeting with prayer, as we do each time. And uh, then we'll do the pledge. And uh, Blake, would you mind opening sure. prayer this morning, sure. please? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for each one in this room and the part that they play in, the, in our community. And we thank you, dear Father, for all the uh, first responders, uh, some of whom are represented here. We pray that you would keep them safe in their duties. We pray, dear Father, that you would bless those who serve our country here in, uh, in, on our shores and, and abroad in the in the distant reaches of the world. We pray, dear Father, that you would minister to their needs and, and keep them safe, dear Father. Lord, they do a, do a great work for us in help keeping us safe. Pray, dear Father, for our government on local level, state and federal level, and we just pray especially that uh, our country could open their eyes and see that a lot of our problems are caused because we have drifted so far from you, dear Father. We need to turn back to you and your ways and honor your your uh, glory, do everything to your glory, dear Father. We just pray that uh, you would instill in us a spirit of, of love for our neighbors and, and instill in us a, a desire to keep your will, dear Father. We thank you for the fiscal court. We thank you for everybody again represented here. We pray that the decisions that we make today will be to your glory and that will be pleasing in your sight. We thank you, dear Father, most of all for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we have the, the hope of salvation. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go <laughs> for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first um, order of business today is uh, the court's aware uh, and our community's aware that we had a, the untimely passing of uh, one of our longtime constables, Bobby Burris, earlier this uh, spring, or this year rather, and uh, I had um, actually had a conversation with uh, Ronald Black some time back, we had, we had talked in some years past about his interest in serving as constable and uh, while he had not actually run for constable or to challenge anybody who was an incumbent constable when this vacancy occurred again I spoke with Ronald and he uh, expressed interest in serving so it's my honor uh, today to actually enter into the uh, orders an executive order uh, that I'll read and appointing Ronald Black as our Simpson County North District Constable and uh, the executive orders 2017-2017-0307 pursuant to KRS 63.220 which governs the procedures for filling vacancies in county offices and upon the sad and untimely death of longtime Simpson County North District Constable Bobby Burris I hereby appoint Ronald Black as Simpson County North District Constable having found him duly qualified to serve this appointment shall be effective immediately the 7th day of March 2017 and remain in effect until January 1st, 2019. The appointment of Ronald Black as North District Constable will be entered into the executive order book and a copy of said order delivered to the Simpson County Clerk, the Office of the Attorney General, and the appropriate officers of the court order this day uh, by me, 7th day of March uh, 2017. So, uh, Ronald, I'm going to ask you to come forward if you would, and I will uh, administer the oath to you. And, uh, I'll ask you to raise your right hand. Let me just ask you, do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as you continue a citizen thereof? that you will faithfully execute to the best of your ability the office of constable according to law 
and you do further solemnly swear or affirm that since the adoption of the present Constitution, you, being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it, nor have you sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have you acted as a second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offending, so help you God. All right, congratulations, Ronald. Appreciate it. Appreciate and uh, I'll give you a minute if you want to say a few words to the court. Let's appreciate the court having trusted me to uphold the duties of the constable of the North District. And I look forward to working with all of you in the sheriff's office. And I'll do the best that I can with everything I do. All right, well, thank you so much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. And as I told Ronald earlier, he's welcome to stay, but I can't imagine why he'd want to. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there's other folks that would love to come to our meetings for all, for all that we're going to do today. So thank you, Ronald. And we appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Congratulations. Now, for those who don't know on camera, you are sick and didn't want to shake hands with No, I, yeah, I'm not going to shake anybody's hands today. I'm, uh, on the downhill, I hope. Uh, Not being standoffish. Yeah. <laughs> Slide around a little bit. Yeah. Slide this way. Sure. We bring that around. I don't want to touch anything. Uh, anybody else is going to touch it. So. Uh, We've got two seats in here now. Yeah, that'd be fine right there. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next order of business today is uh, each year we have representatives from the uh, district highway office who come and, and uh, go over the proposed rural secondary uh, projects and program funding for our county. And uh, this year we have, uh, I, I just had Joe's name on here. I'll let Joe introduce uh, his other guests. But Joe Plunk, who is the newest, uh, uh, or is, is the new, is still, I guess, new uh, District 3 uh, engineer for our uh, highway department district here. And uh, Joe, I'll just turn it over to you and let you introduce your folks and, and uh, welcome. Good morning, my name is Joe Plunk. I'm the Chief District Engineer for the District 3 Office of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. Our office is located in Bowling Green, and we cover 10 counties in the South Central Kentucky area. Simpson County is covered by our section office. All maintenance and construction activities that occur in Simpson County are covered by our Scottsville office. And I have two representatives here with me today. Ashley Graves, standing or sitting here, he's our transportation engineer supervisor that covers maintenance activities for three counties. And Aaron Wallace is seated in the back. He's a transportation engineer supervisor that covers construction activities, including in Simpson County. As the judge said, as per KRS 177.330, transportation cabinet is to consult with the fiscal courts on a yearly basis on the rural and secondary roads program within each county. And each of you have a copy of the fiscal year 2018, which begins July 1. <coughs> fiscal year 2018 Rural and Secondary Roads Program for Simpson County. I'll just go through the list, and if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Your projected allotment for this year is $1,016,375. That includes a carryover from the previous fiscal year. Item number one, routine maintenance and traffic on 95.575 miles of rural and secondary roads in Simpson County, $338,400. That's a specified percentage for each county. County judge expenses, line item number two is $3,862. Item number three, resurfacing and pavement failure repairs on 6.139 miles of Highway 585, Gold City Road, from the intersection with Highway 73, extending north to approximately the second intersection, Highway 622 at Gold City. The cost is $553,265. And the last line item on here is what's called flex funds. You're familiar with this from previous years where there's an, a specific allotment for each county that the county can use for their own rural and secondary roads in the county, county maintained roads, that allotment for this year, $120,848. <coughs> and I'll be remiss if I don't ask that 
<coughs> we are happy to use those funds for you on state maintained rural and secondary roadways if you so choose. Are there any questions about that presentation? But what width will that road be? Will it be the same width as it is now? Because the road, if you haven't looked at it, and I've complained about this a few times, but from where you're stopping this off at Gold City Store to the Allen County line, the last time they did that, they narrowed that in. And, and there's a, a about an inch drop. And it's not narrower than the road used to be. And I guess I did it to try to save some funds, but it's it's very dangerous that way because if a vehicle gets over and they feel it drop off, they try to overcorrect, and it's, it has caused some accidents. So I didn't know is is this road going to be the same width as it is now? And for those who don't know, their back has a map for location. I seen the map, but I didn't see a actual. But this section is going to be from 7030 here, close to town. Up to Gold City Road. The section I think you're Gold City Store. Oh, yeah, Gold yeah. City Store. From it, the store on out to the line, yeah, I think it's the second year you're talking about that. It, it is a couple of narrow spots through there. Yeah, and, and I, I wasn't, you know, I, yeah. I was just asking, is this road going to be as wide as it is now, or are you going? It, it's set up, it, it's a 20 foot road, and then it has chip shoulders and a couple patches throughout it that, that goes over on the chip. My plan is to do an asphalt wedge onto those chips. So okay. we'll have asphalt over over the chip. Okay. That's the plan. All right, right. I just, uh, you know, if it hasn't been looked at, I, I would hope that would be looked at because that, that does create a problem when, when it's, you know, that much narrower just to, uh, for a safety aspect of it. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. And, and of course, uh, we're, we're very familiar with this road. Uh, it's been on our, on our road. Uh, radar for, for various reasons a lot more in the last few years but um, obviously the section from where the quarry entrance is into town uh, is receiving far greater uh, stress than the rest of the road in terms of regular heavy heavy traffic and as um, those who will remember when we were talking about this more uh, globally as a community I know that road, I know all these state roads are within so many miles of a highway uh, interstate that the state's got a waiver because of the, the uh, over, over the, not the overweight, but the ability for trucks to get to their locations if they're coming off the interstate. I understand all that. And so every one of those roads, you're not overweight as long as you're you know, within 15 miles of the interstate. But that road itself, I think, has a 44,000 pound uh, rating, as I remember. Um, so for that section, at least there back into town, is there any thought or ability to, to do anything that actually makes that more likely to be a 80,000 pound rated surface uh, or, or, or roadway? And I mean, I think this will last a good while, I mean, probably, you know, a few years maybe with this kind of traffic on it, but for that one section, but obviously if you could beef it up there, maybe you could make that be prolonged in terms of the wear on it. So I, I wasn't sure what kind of thickness you're looking at or anything that would help at least that, that two mile section. It's about two miles there. Unfortunately, this is a, uh, a resurfacing project. So it, we're looking towards more of an inch overlay. Yeah. You're, you're talking about beefing up it. That usually you get that through the, the base courses. And yeah. That's beyond the funding of what this, okay. this would let us do. Uh, However, there are failure there are repairs other. that are included in this, and you, you'll see there, there are some painted areas out there now where some evaluation has been done those. where the pavement, the, the subgrade is failing. And yeah. That will be more than just an overlay. We're not just going to overlay right. those. Those will be dig outs and, and repairs. So I'm just concerned, and I realize you guys are just doing your job, and I appreciate what you do. I, I'm concerned long term, that section is going to be a continual overlay and maintenance issue until that surface, of the, that base, is significant enough to withstand triaxle and, and four axle. I've seen dump trucks loading this rock coming in and out of there. So um, it's just it's just not built for that. So we understand um, that concern. Yes. But I mean, the road beyond even beyond that, it's all the way out to mm -hmm. the Gold City store is is in, in, in failure in places. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see that section. Or this road on the on the list here. So. 
What about Highway 73 out toward the Logan County line? That's a, 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 a MP route. And it's an MP route. Yeah. 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 So if you actually look at the map, you'll see that it's a, it's a colored green. Uh -huh. and all, all the greens are MP route. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, the horse MP, I don't know. It, it, it's a primary. It's, it's addressed okay. to a different funding source than real secondary. Okay. Uh, but we had we have been working on base failures with the crews there, and we had to shut down for the winter, and the, the asphalt plant shut down. Right. We're hoping as soon as they open up, I think this comes a week, we'll, we'll get back on that. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of markings and mm -hmm. I would say base repair. It's not eligible for this particular funding. This rule on secondary is set aside by the KRS uh, for uh, an allotment of funding every year. And most of those other routes that you see, anything not colored in green or in state, of course, are eligible for the RS funding. The only other thing I'd like to say, I, I heard this morning that uh, Sean's not at the highway department anymore. And I hope whatever replacement you get is, 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 does as good a job as he, he did. I have nothing but good things to say about him. He, he took the uh, State Department and gave them the means to, to do extra things that I've never seen a State Department do before. And, you know, I'm, I can name, well, the, there's a, there was a curve on uh, Blackjack Road. That instead of bidding it out, he just rented some equipment and had the guys out there do it and, and did it. You know, he did a really good job on all that, and, and uh, I hope whoever you find us his replacement will, will be as goal-oriented as he as he seemed like he was to me. It just seemed like he he uh, took it upon himself to, to do a lot of things with the guys that were out there. And this road here that we're talking about, he he took all those trees out and, and did all that dirt work out there, and he just he rented the equipment and, and had the guys out there do it. They did an excellent job of it. So that's, I, I would hope we can find somebody like that to put back in there. I appreciate those remarks. Uh, Sean is definitely a, a go-getter. Mm -hmm. sure uh, he's busy. still within the transportation cabinet, just not in that position. Right. Mr. Barry Phillippe, you'll have an opportunity to meet him, I hope, soon. He's acting in that role. And, and he's also uh, cut in the same mold as Sean, so well, I good. think you'll find good results there as well. Did you say his name was Barry Phillip? Barry Phillippe. P-H-I-L-L-I-P-P-I. -L -L -I -I. We'll, we'll continue to look for projects, just like what we mentioned. In 585, you said we took out some trees with uh, I'm hoping to do that again this year with, with the trees too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just some curves up there with some trees that I'd love to talk to the property owners and utilities and try to get some slope to move back. There, there's one tree on this road and it's just outside of the right of way and I can get you the guy's name. He lives in Tennessee and owns it. But it is, it's, uh, I'm going to say, it's there across from Bill Richards' house, so four miles out. I'm just guessing a rough estimate. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a dead tree that is two and a half foot through, and it's gone. When if the wind catches it just right, it could blow right out of the road. So even though it's just outside of the the right of way, it's something that that I think the state might should look at because it, you know if the right wind comes through, it's going to blow it out and go city road. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and suggestions like that, I'm, I'm I'm glad to accept those. And, I'll meet with you and get his name and his number and we'll look at it. Okay. We love opportunities to remove roadside hazards. <laughs> yes. If the property owner is willing to work with us on that, we won't be happy right. to do that. Right. Anything else for Joe or for the district uh, staff here on the, uh, on the proposal? Mm -hmm. Then what we need is, I think, um, uh, you all like to have an actual motion that we've Review, accept. What's the what's the term that we like to use? It's not necessary to vote. It's up to you. Okay. Just Last year we acknowledged acknowledgement. The acknowledge the, the uh, presentation. That's a good idea. So, uh, how about a motion to acknowledge the presentation of the rural secondary program from the district highway office? Blake made the motion. Bobby second. was the second on that. And uh, if there's no discussion. We'll vote on the motion. Pam. Blake Tarpley. Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. I might mention while Joe's still here, 
um, for the sake of the court, and I'm sure that uh, Joe and his team will be monitoring these kind of things as well. They're actually having a, a hearing today in the Appropriations and Revenue Committee at, in the House on a bill that's proposed, uh, House Bill 292, that uh, they're not going to take any action on it, but I do think it's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, the fact that they're even having a hearing on it, discussing it today, means that it's something that might advance, especially in the uh, special session on tax uh, reform and all that, <coughs> that would affect the formula on the way that the motor fuels tax is reallocated. And I've read the bill, and part of the, uh, you know, the, the, the language in the bill talks about the, this, the proportion uh, of the motor fuels tax that will be distributed once it exceeds, I think, $825 million, which is the number that it would have been at had the motor fuels tax still been at $0.32, cents, I think. And then after that, it changes the formula and gives a higher percentage of the motor fuels tax to cities. Um, and, it, and it's based on a whole different um, division. But the portions that go to rural secondary funding for, for uh, this program are affected by that. That's part of that distribution formula. So uh, again, just pay attention to that. I won't get into the details of it at this point because it's just being uh, discussed. But this is the Kentucky League of Cities number one legislative priority and so they're pushing pretty hard for it uh, again it's being heard this morning in committee i guess actually at 10 eastern time and they will be here on it so i'm sure you all are getting notices from the matrix association about it KCO, uh, kcja they're all uh, on the record opposed to that of course but again it doesn't just affect county road aid and county roads but it also affects the rural secondary road uh, programs so it could have a bearing on the flex funds and the uh, other types of things as well. Um, so just, just something we need to pay attention to. And Joe, I, I don't know if you want to mention it all, because um, I don't know if my court would have heard much about this uh, new prioritization. Uh, just, just briefly, kind of how sure. the, the, the state's looking at, at these projects now with the very limited resources, at how they're trying to I didn't even put you on the spot about that, Happy to. but they might like to understand that a little bit. The Secretary of Transportation spoke last summer to the Joint Interim Transportation Committee about our cash flow crisis, our funding situation within the Transportation Cabinet. We are under, an imp we've implemented what's called Pause 50, where we've paused authorization of state funding for construction projects mostly. It has affected some on the maintenance side as well. And some of our state funded projects that we've been um, developing over the years, like Highway 100 East, um, other US 31W uh, North toward Warren County, all those are state funded projects and we've not been able to move forward with those because of the lack of state funds. Over the years, really a decade, 15 years or more, the highway plan has gotten out of balance. There are many, many, many more projects than there are re than there is revenue to back those up. Governor Bevan wants to get that that ship right sized, and he's asked the transportation cabinet to come up with a balanced transportation plan, as we do each cycle. So we will be recommending a transportation plan uh, to the governor. The governor, of course, will make some edits, but the governor will recommend that to the General Assembly next January. The even year is the budget year. And part of that process is to be more data-driven in our approach of project selection. Our office has met with each county in the area, including here, we met with the judge just a few weeks ago, about projects within Simpson County. Trying to use data as far as mobility, metrics, crash data, economic development potential, so that we can pull that project, there's 4,000 projects statewide and trying to reduce those to about 1,200 projects statewide. That means some that, are, that have been on the highway plan in the past may have to be deferred to a later date. And that could affect some in Simpson County, of course, as well. So it's more of a data-driven approach. Obviously, there are means through the ads and ultimately with legislators uh, to tweak the, the legislative branch obviously has their, their uh, authority as well once they get the highway plan next year. But the governor's goal is to have a more data-driven approach that is a balanced 
highway plan so that when you see a project in the highway plan, there's a promise behind it that it's funded and will, will be completed. Did you mention anything on the next section of 100? Yeah, John and I talked about it several times. And that, that's the kind of thing, I mean, that, that project and others, that's why I want him to explain that what, what the governor's goal is, which I think is, is admirable because we've always seen these projects in the highway plan and uh, had some sense that they were actually going to be done. And the public sees that and it's printed in the paper each time the, the session has a, uh, a new budget. And the truth is that there's projects in there that don't have funding attached to it. And so it would be much better if when you see a project in the highway plan that you have at least the confidence that, that that's really there. I mean, if the funding's there for it. Also, if it's not there, you know it's because there's not funding for it, not just an arbitrary <coughs> decision to pull it or something. So, I mean, four, what is it, 4,000 to 1,200? I mean, that's a huge calling of, uh, of projects. But the truth is that projects that don't have um, either community support or, or difficult right-of-way issues or, or new projects that are, uh, you know, obviously maybe something that the community needs, but it's something that doesn't now exist, maybe a bypass project or something like that. I mean, those things are going to have to really be evaluated and cost. I mean, if it's a $50 million bypass project for a major urbanized area, that's, that's probably proportionally as important to that area maybe as a $2 million project is to a smaller county, but the reality is there's only so much money. So, um, and that's what we've been going through this at the, at the uh, ad level. Uh, again, as Joe said, we've already met here locally, but, but hopefully by the time we get around to seeing the highway plan <coughs> next session, when the projects finally are in there, you'll be able to have confidence in telling your constituents that, okay, that's got real money attached to it. There's really going to be some right way bought in 20 18 or 2019, it's really going to be uh, utilities moved in you know, the next year or whatever. So, so that's, uh, anyway, Joe, thanks so much. Appreciate what you all do. Uh, you've got a very uh, professional team in, in the district office, and, and I always enjoy working with you guys. So, appreciate you're welcome to stay, but again, I understand why you wouldn't. Uh, so. Just one more thing. You yeah. get a, Joe, would you get a number for Barry? Would you text it to Jim's office or he made it so we can have it? Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we just continue on. Um, next is um, our uh, sheriff's office. Is the sheriff's uh, making the 2016 uh, settlement to us today? And I think uh, Jada Kessler is the designated. Uh, Presenter, so good morning, Jada. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. That's not all our board. This is the best of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You want to take two? I hope this is a report that you've seen in the past. If it's not, then I apologize. <clears throat> On the front page, you can see, this is kind of self-explanatory, what we estimated to bring in versus that figure right next to it, what we actually brought in for the year. Um, the estimate was $1,330,830 versus an actual bring-in of $719,752.13 on page two this kind of breaks down each quarter um, and all of the categories that we collect in and those are a lot of numbers i'll just let you look at those real quick you have any questions about what you're looking at right now well let me make sure i'm i don't know that the court would need any explanation but mm -hmm. obviously when you say that out loud it would the, the, the initial thing would be, oh gosh, why is the number so far off? But realizing that um, this is a, a settlement of fees, but the budget itself, and this kind of goes back to 
uh, and we're going to have a whole a whole new approach to this budget. Um, let's see, there's the chair. Because he and I have talked about this because of the, the way that DLG is now determined to uh, view a budget for a fee pooling office versus a non-fee office. So the sheriff has continued to prepare a, a regular budget just like he always has um, in the, in the uh, January time frame. And so that budget, that $1 million estimate includes the proposed amounts of general fund dollars that the fiscal court puts into the sheriff's office. But since all that expense is in our budget, obviously we never remit a check to the sheriff's fee account for that amount. In fact, it's the opposite. We get all the fees from the sheriff's office remitted to our, our account. So again, the spread in that, I just wouldn't want anybody to read that, especially uh, Keith, and I, I think Keith understands that as well, but just if the public heard that, well, why, is, why, is the, why are the fees so much less than what was budgeted? It's, it has, it's not really apples and oranges, it's apples and oranges, it's not apples and apples. When you think about the number that uh, has uh, over $600,000 of fiscal court fee, uh, general fund dollars in that that's not actually there. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. And you'll see that on page three, the other things that are, um, considered for that budget amount that we don't, if, like you were saying, we don't collect that. So you'll see that on page three there. Just so you know that it will all look different next year. Oh, it looks different all the time. Yeah. I mean, because they've, they've now told us not to include uh, the expense side of That's any funny. of that in, in, uh, in, in the speaker and budget. So. But you go right here. You skip on over to page four at the very bottom, lines 51. You'll see th uh, on those quarter breakdowns what we actually paid in to fiscal court. And over at the very far right, you'll see that total number there, the 719,752.13 for our total pay in for 2016. And, and Nicole, maybe just as a point of uh, reference, in that 2016 budget, what did we what did we have? Uh, do you remember? Uh, yeah, prepare or uh, would it be in the uh, financial statement? I mean, would it reflect a single a line for share fees that was that was that was mm-hmm that was. Uh, I just I don't remember offhand, so I was just looking to see how that. How much we collected? Well, how, how much we budgeted, and what so that twelve months as as a. Uh, six hundred sixty-one thousand eighty-seven dollars. Six sixty-one was what was pro projected. Was for fees. Uh -huh. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm on. just trying to see how much difference it was. So. Did you all hear that? Yeah, six how much? Six hundred sixty-one thousand eighty-seven dollars. And you actually collected seven nineteen seven fifty-two. Yeah, fifty-eight dollars. Or remit that much. Yeah, that much. Fifty-eight dollars. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we collected so far this fiscal year eighty-seven percent. So. All right. Very good. At the end of February. Very good. <clears throat> Were there any questions? On, on page four, what's included in those unpaid obligations? What's the on page four. Okay, the unpaid obligations on page four. Okay, what, this is a real-time report. So that when I close this out at the on December 31st, this is saying what I've actually paid out as of that day. On the last quarter for the month of December, I had, as you see, $110,100.16 for the month of December that I have not paid as of the 31st. I don't write out until between the 1st and the 10th of the next month. So that's just saying that I still have that to pay for December, and I'm showing that on this report that it's not paid yet, but we are paying. They are paid, yeah. Correct. Was there anything, um, again, I'm just perusing, any particular fee income that was unusually high this particular year? Or was everything just up a little? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it hit about what we thought. We had some excess, but nothing really stood out that was. 
I mean, it looks like we, uh, we, we, we beat our estimate every year now for the last five years at least I, that I can remember on concealed carry deadly weapon permits. Uh, that's well, something the last like five years of carry concealed just it yeah. keeps shooting up. And I'm very conservative. When I do my budget, I would rather hopefully hit and have money. We give you more money than it come in under. But it's it's a guesswork. I mean, I usually, as opposed to just looking at the past year, I look at like the last five years and kind of average it out. Of course, CLEP was a little bit of a boost of it. It's in and out, but because of that, uh, and you all may not realize this. I sure didn't think about it when they did this last year, but that was only when they did that in the budget last year. That meant that was only good for the budget year. But this year they solidified that you know, in statute. So now that's a, that, that amount that comes to the fire department and to the to the sheriff's department. The uh, Incentive pay is now permanent, but anyway, that's. Clef, just so you gentlemen know, on the police officer standard, when you go through the academy, you become what's called a POP certified, peace officer professional <coughs> certified. You become eligible for the training incentive, which is $4,000 a year. Well, what does that mean? It breaks down to $2. If I tell you a police officer is making $15, the county's paying him $13. He's getting $15, $2, we're getting reimbursed from Clef, and it's coming over. So basically two dollars of each officer's salary is that club money that we get back from the state. But that only applies to a full-time police officer that's been through the academy and trained. If you're part-time, we don't get any club money back or anything like that. Any other questions of the sheriff or Jada? And I do want to commend Jada on the She's, she's had a lot to learn here in the, in the last uh, year in, in terms of this role, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a good report, very easy to read, and uh, looks to be in order. So, is there anybody uh, motion has any questions? By Marty to accept the uh, sheriff's uh, fee settlement for 2016. Larry, second the motion. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Pam, we'll call the roll, please. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. And that motion passes. Thank you, Jada. And uh, that, I think, runs the gamut for our uh, pre-regular business uh, special <laughs> presentations or uh, guests. I have noticed that uh, I think I must have done this at a, on a, on a agenda prior because of the way we formatted something and I've not put it back in there. Pam, don't let me forget, we've left out the public comment section at the top. Um, I need to add that back in. I think I put in the guest area instead of that. Yeah. So um, I will open the floor for public comment if there's anybody here from the public who wishes to speak. And uh, we'll let you do that at this time if there's anybody. If not, we'll move into our regular business. And uh, the minutes were put out in advance of today's meeting from the February, Feb, excuse me, February 21st regular court meeting. I hope you've had a chance to look at those. Motion by Bobby to approve the uh, Minutes from the February 21st regular meeting. Second. Second by Blake. We'll vote on the motion, Pam. Bobby Bush. Yes. Blake Harkley. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Jim Henderson. Yes. And does everybody also have the March 1st special call meeting yes. minutes? It's on the okay. Motion by Marty to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Larry. We'll vote on the minutes for the March 1st special call meeting with the city. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Tommy Bush? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. 
and those minutes are approved. Okay, the uh, second reading of a budget amendment is in order today. I'm pleased to announce that uh, through uh, a tense and, and uh, uh, strong negotiations on behalf of our uh, county by our, our uh, finance director, we were able to strong arm the state into uh, accepting our budget amendment proposal uh, based on our projected revenues in the jail, which is extremely important to being able to finish the year without doing so much of a juggling act. And so uh, I was very pleased that the Department for Local Government agreed with us to, uh, to approve this. This was something that they did not uh, consider lightly. And in fact, uh, Tom Dobson and I spoke and he said that uh, you know, they really, really did not like making amendments based on projected revenues, um, but that because of our solid uh, history and being prudent financial uh, managers, they felt like that, that, that they weren't concerned about our ability to project that correctly and uh, also looked at our overall financial strength and felt like that we had the ability to to handle it if we did not receive these revenues, um, but uh, I'm confident that we will based on uh, the trends. So you've got the budget amendment here. It's the total amendment of $236,242, uh, 193750 of that specifically is related to projected Class D revenue increase and the corresponding expenditures that would be necessary um, because of those increased numbers. Um, there's an additional $20,000 in the transient room tax, um, also some insurance from our uh, loss in our drug court building. Move we approve motion by the reading, of, uh, reading and final passage of budget bill number three. Motion by Blake to approve the second reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by Marty. <coughs> Any discussion? All right, then we'll vote on the motion, Pam. Blake Tarkley? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes, and the motion passes, and we will uh, make the uh, necessary adjustments to the budget. Thank you all. Next is to review and uh, possibly award a bid for the purchase of two vehicles for the Sheriff's Department. Sheriff, I've got the bid here. Honestly, I don't remember what the... Uh, uh, projected cost was um, from your uh, estimate to the court, but as I read it, it's it's a total of fifty seven four forty eight. So that's two, right? That's for two vehicles, yes, sir. Uh, give you the breakdown. Hunt for what we did. I first I contacted the state to see uh, what the status was of the. Uh, <coughs> Approved rates through them. Right now, they are refiguring, uh, means they're negotiating on what the new state contract is going to be, which is a benefit to us, and that's one reason we're trying to go ahead and order trucks earlier in the year than later. Uh, the gentleman for, that does takes care of the state contract said probably in April it would be renegotiated, but they were honoring 2016 prices until then, uh, up till April. The state contract price for a single unit uh, would be $28,522.80. As you all know, we like to try to do business locally if it's uh, financially feasible for us. So we set out uh, failures in the area, advertise like we're supposed to. Hunt Ford is the only one that responded for the bid and they're within $200 per unit their bid came back at $28,724. That's approximately $201, uh, I shouldn't say approximately, I guess it is, $201 difference. Uh, my recommendation would be that we get both vehicles, which would be a total of 57,448 from Hunt Forward. I think their price is partially based on knowing that the state contract price is honoring the 2016 prices. But either way we go, it would be my opinion 
and I don't control the prices for people that after April, I think it's going to be two, three thousand dollars more per vehicle if we do it after April as opposed to now because I think the prices will go up. Uh, my recommendation would be go with Hunt Forward. It will cost us four hundred and two dollars more, but they are local. And then you have to figure in. I mean, everybody can play their games with it. State contract, we got to go up to Frankfurt to pick it up. I have to send a person up there for the day. Then we've got to relay it to the place to get emergency equipment on it, and we got to go back up and get it. Hunt Ford said as part of theirs, they'll take the vehicle from Franklin to where we get the emergency equipment put on. And if we want them to go back and pick it up, they will, or if we want to go get it. So theoretically, uh, the $200 per unit uh, more that we would pay, I don't know we're actually even paying. So my recommendation would be to get both vehicles from Hunt Ford here in Franklin. I know what an SUV is. What's an SSP? Uh, it's truck. The same, well, you, I know, you, but is it, I mean, what does SSP stand for? Yeah, special service package, yes. Well, what's it in your line on budget for vehicles this year? I think it was 77. Plus, plus. But now that that figure includes the emergency equipment where this bid does not. Right. Uh, we're going to hit right at that. Uh, Five or $6,000 per vehicle to equip it. Well, the equipment's getting more and more expensive. Uh, I can tell you, because I had that bid up, 62.48. Per vehicle is approximately what it's going to run to get all the emergency equipment on. That lettered lighting. It's going to be right in budget. I mean, yeah. What's in yeah. Okay, you've heard the sheriff's recommendation. Motion by Larry to accept the bids, uh, the bid from Hunt Forward for the two uh, police uh, package trucks. The sheriff bid. The uh, uh, second is by Blake. Any questions? And they, they, they will be exactly the specs that you had, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. They'll be just, uh, you've seen the white trucks we've got out. Uh, well, I think we've got three of them on the road right now. Be just like those. Guys love them. Ain't a whole lot you can't do with them. And gas-wise, compared to the Dodge Chargers, I get better gas. And price-wise, they're a little bit cheaper than buying the Chargers. So you get a little bit of all of them there. Are you going to have some surplus vehicles now? Possible. We've got a couple that are, you wouldn't want to take them very far, but for paper service, we've still been, they got 160,000 on them, uh, lots of knocks and things. I know Gary Crafton had asked one time if uh, we had one come available to yell at him. So we may have a couple, but quite frankly, if we do, by the time you take the emergency equipment out, you're looking at a $1,000 vehicle. Uh, the age and shapes are in. That's the reason I'm keeping running unless they have a major right. uh, problem. I'm just trying to keep them on the road. <coughs> All right. We did have a motion and a second. We haven't voted. Okay. No. Right. Let's vote. Larry Randolph. Yes. Blake Tarpley. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Jim Henderson. Yes. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. All right. Next on the agenda is a uh, contract that uh, is from the jail to enter into a contract with uh, someone to do, to do GED instructor work at the jail. And uh, Eric, I'll just kind of let you explain if you want to. Or Brent, okay, either one. <clears throat> Jim, this is something that we've done in the past. Um, this is just a change of person. Uh, Jerry Drake had been doing that for us, and when Miss Kay retired, uh, we lost Jerry, so uh, it's already budgeted. Uh, but Mr. Haddix has been doing it since July for us, and we just never had gotten him a contract, so that's what this is. Okay. This so this is not something new. It's not anything new, no sir. Okay. Any questions on the? Uh... How long, Miss Drake been doing? Pardon. How long has she been doing? Miss Drake has done it. I think for I know fifteen years. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't speak before that. Do you, you have a long time? Do you, you have, have a time leaving? A ballpark number of how many people it makes have gotten a GED per year? I, I want to say last year was like 33. Yeah. We, we were like 
I mean, just being real, we were like the highest in the state you know, as far as right. And, 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 so. and we actually come. We actually graduate more people out of our GED program inside the jail than the adult education does outside the jail community. And, and adult education pays for them to come during the day. This is just a supplement to get the gentleman to come back during the night to work with those folks that do the community service work for us. So let me make sure I understand. So is, is this directly with an individual or is it with the South Central Kentucky it, Community it's, Technical it's College? It's with the individual. Okay, okay. It just had in care of, and I just want to make sure we got that. Okay. This is an address. Okay. Any questions? Any further? Any further to questions? That we need a motion to approve the uh, contract with uh, Raymond Haddix between the jail and Raymond Haddix uh, to perform GED contract work uh, for the jail pursuant to the terms that are listed here. So moved. Motion by Bobby. Is there a second? Second. Second by Blake. Any questions? All right, we'll vote on the motion, Pam. Bobby Bush? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, next is uh, to review uh, and approve, potentially, an elevator maintenance contract and uh, Bill, do you want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing with renegotiating our contracts? Of course, that's, that's looking at contracts that stem from some of the issues we've had with our current company. Uh, and uh, so I was looking at another company that might come in and we could uh, get them to give us a proposal on, on some of our contracts. Right now, the contract that's come and due in March would be the one over to Annex Building. And uh, we haven't had any issues over there as far as the elevator you know, working or anything or them checking it. Uh, but I, I think you all remember a few months back when we had issues with the, the Justice Center elevator when we had the main one, not the main one for the public, but the one for the judges which is their secure elevator that we had issued almost six weeks getting that thing repaired. <coughs> and uh, the judges were using the steps and they were having to go through um, areas that weren't secure to get to their courtrooms and to their suite. So, you know, this all of this has stemmed from that. And most currently, our, our issue was uh, this elevator here. We had a oil leak come in the muffler and the the company that we're currently using come and looked at it and uh, their their proposal included cutting the muffler out and replacing it at a cost of almost eight thousand dollars so that's when i really got another company involved and i i called them plus the timing on that was four to six weeks out if, if we got them to repair it the elevator would be done four to six weeks so i called the the other company in louisville and he said he had a tech in Bowling Green, and they were down there that afternoon. He actually took the muffler out right then. They took the muffler out, took it apart, and it had two seals blown in it that had cracks in them. Uh, the company in Nashville wanted to completely cut. They had to unwell, cut it out with a torch and put it weld a new one in. This guy unbolted two couplings, took it out, took it back to Louisville, and repaired it for around $1,400. So it was almost 55 hundred dollars difference including the service trip and everything so in 2013 I wasn't here and they got they had got some proposals from this company a little was able elevator company they're a national company and uh, the bids then were even cheaper than the ones we're using but we were already in contracts that we couldn't that we couldn't get out of without, without paying a lot of money so they just continually to roll over until after this uh, issue at the Justice Center, Sam sent them letters, certified letters, saying that we're going to terminate at the end of each one of these contracts. So the contract for the courthouse here is 2018 and one at the Justice Center 2020. If I might, Bill, just real quick, these were gotten at different, you know, because we got elevators at different times. This was the oldest one, obviously. 
and the contract was different. The renewal period on it was only three years. The others are five-year renewals. And so I just did, I sent a letter basically referencing all contract numbers and even though, because you have to give them like 90 days notice or it automatically rolls over. And so I did it last, sometime last fall, late last fall. And I sent another one because they sent some correspondence up here talking about, you know, renewal and stuff. And I sent another certified letter saying, you who remember this letter, I cert letter you all signed for back a few months ago. So that that's why it's not, it, it's, we didn't get into this overnight. And unfortunately, we're not going to get out away from this company overnight. Well, this contract is the same thing. You have to give them 90 days mm -hmm. written notice, 90 days prior to the. Mm -hmm. That that's not uncommon, but I mean, it just we had to stay on it and basically to mark our calendars accordingly. And if we're happy with them, great. If not, then we need to do something different. We primarily so, wanted to use this opportunity to renegotiate. We were locked in, mm -hmm. or had been locked in with those other contracts, and they had just ongoing increases, and we had. Just, it just incrementally had increased. What were we paying now, Bill? We were paying uh, 167 uh, 19 a month. So and this is going to be 127 Right, $40 cheaper a month and then $480 a year. Well, if you go to the, if you pay it uh, annually, you can get 2% cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. They got some options. You can pay monthly at 127 or 1.5% savings by paying, you know, quarterly or 2% by paying uh, annually. And, and these folks here, when we talk to them, honestly, you can just tell talking to people, there's just different mindsets. Uh, the, the other company we had, I mean, it was kind of, you know, they, they knew they had you. Uh, this company here, I think, was, and we talked about some different ideas that we might have uh, in the future and options, and they, they seem to be extremely uh, agreeable to working with us. So even though it's a three-year contract just like the others could be. And in the process, I found out the company that we're now using was bought out by a great big company. And the big company's kind of eating up the smaller, you know, elevator company. So, uh, so what do you, you just need us to approve? This what we yeah, Sam had looked at the contract and said we didn't see any problems with it. So it'd just be a matter of us approving it. And, and like I said, the other one will, the next one will be the courthouse here comes due in 2018 and the Justice Center is 2020 when that contract is over. This is just one elevator. This isn't all of them. One out of five. They're not, they're not going to get them all on the same. No. no. As I said, that's the problem. It, it, Can we do that? No. No. No, we're not paying that. We have, we have. No, no. I'm saying as each one comes due, have them to add it on. Oh, yes. He's already sent them letters that on each contract that they're going to be canceled. Yeah. I understand that. I'm saying when you're doing the new contract, see if they will put the other elevators as they come in on the same contract so they all come do it at the same time. I, when I talked to uh, Mr. Warden, he, 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 would, he said he'd be interested in look at them. I mean, when he comes and looks, he looks at, he hasn't looked at the Justice Center or here. They look at the equipment and they look at the ages of equipment. They look at the installation dates. They look at the current problems and, and they put all that into their, you know, proposal. Because the equipment's different, we have two. We have one Dover and three, you know, Crump elevators. So the the Dover is the one that's over at the annex building right now. It's a little bit of difference in the mechanism. Like over there, the mufflers on the outside. All the rest of them, the mufflers are on the inside of the oil tank. So, which and yeah, don't mean anything center, does, but yeah. And those in the justice center are are have a far more complex. Computer system and everything yeah. on them. They would probably be a little so bit the higher. Terms yeah. might be yeah, different. Well, that's Even. not what I'm speaking of. But I just, you don't have time. Yeah. So when you send one letter, it, it, if you have the same problem in the future, you could give one letter, terminate the whole thing, and get somebody else to do it. Yeah. As as, as we get this being out to that last one, I think that there's no reason to think we couldn't try to consolidate the contract terms. Since, It'd be best since they're going to be holding negotiate this, what I'm five elevator uh, Since they're going to be holding all the contracts, we can might negotiate with them and say, roll, no, we'll roll one, 
contractor for all that's, that's five. That's primarily what I'm saying. But even the one, the company now has all five elevators, and we've got pricing difference on. It yeah. actually costs more for that elevator than it does here per month. I don't know why. And we did get a letter from them saying that you know they weren't going to go up this year, but. Okay, Larry, did you make a motion? Yes. I thought I saw your hand. Motion to approve entering into a contract with Able Elevators International for a uh, three-year contract on the maintenance of the elevator at the uh, Annex Building at 103 West Cedar. Is there a second? Also a second by Marty. Do we need to include the paid hand labor? Um, I think yeah. I mean, if if you are inclined to do that. Are, are we able to do that? I mean, I think we do other prepaid because of a discount uh, for service contracts. Yeah, that, that I, I'm comfortable with paying it uh, to to get the two percent discount. Yeah, we also do. So yeah. So yeah. And they have our proof of insurance and all that. So really, all we would need to do is send a contract and how we want to pay it. And Mr. Ward is going to sign it and send it back. You know, that then. Just out of curiosity, did we get any other bids from any other companies out of Louisville or anywhere else? Mm -hmm. I went with them because we had already, you know, proposed from them before. And the fact that when I called them, they mm -hmm. when this and, and then when I got the pricing and we saved six thousand dollars at one on one job, that was kind of a. You know. hey, Jim, this, this is out of my area, but I'm just. I was looking on the state vendor contract of that some other things, and I actually saw there they were listed as a state vendor. Able. Well, and that's what I started to, to say about this particular company. When we actually um, got a bid from them back, you know, I, I, gave you, I gave you that stuff. <coughs> they were, uh, I don't think that there were but a couple of companies. I mean, in, in the whole area, I'm talking to Louisville to Nashville, that did elevator maintenance inspection and inspections. Um, and it was either Nashville Machine Elevator out of Nashville or this Able Elevator out of uh, Louisville. And I had contact, the reason I ended up with this name was I had contacted some other counties to see who they used for their, and it was, they either, almost everybody that I talked to that, was in our area had either used this national machine elevator or able so i'm not sure that there are others and if there are there's several others other others that do inspections At the uh, historical factory building mm -hmm. the state inspector gave us i'm gonna say about 10 names i think well People give us that information because i mean we don't necessarily have any i mean this again this is one 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 contract if there's a another outfit out there that will you know, inspect them for you know a lot less, and and it's got a, a resume of qualified work. I mean, I, we don't owe anybody anything. This is just the only other outfit out there that I was able to find that did county elevator, county, county public buildings, county, county government buildings. I should say public buildings. But you just think about one hundred twenty dollars a month. Doesn't drive here from all. Well, well they, they have people out. Right? Yeah, they get people. He just says he is an anti-bone drinker. Well, they don't have a tech, have a tech in Bowling Green. They had a tech in Bowling Green that day that they came down here. Or had a tech in Bowling Green. Because one thing I did, I did check with him about if we had an emergency. And they, he said, you know, first thing we'll do is check all our, where our techs are and we'll get somebody down there. He said, if we have to send them out of Louisville, he said, they'll be on their way. And, you know, this one here, and, but the one over to Annex, the one at Judges Center, I don't like for them to be down very long because they're so, you know, like for over the Annex, that's their way upstairs and the way they're down. <laughs> so. Okay, any other questions? We got a motion, right? Yes. All right, let's vote on the motion. Larry Randolph? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Mike Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. All right, thank you. Bill, just stay right there for a minute. And uh, let me, uh, you all are, may or may not be aware of the detail of, of uh, repair work that's needed. And it seems like every building we've got at some point in, in time, every building has the same need. Um, this building has had 
uh, ongoing issues with uh, our roof. We have uh, been patching it here and there since I've been in office and long before. The original roof is actually still, the roof that's on the building is, is the original roof. It's a, it's a standing seam type metal roof and um, as best as we can tell it's, it's circa 1882. <laughs> Um, and the uh, clock tower and all of that, all that metal work. It's metal. <coughs> go up there sometime. Any of you haven't been up there would like to and see it. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, type, of, type of construction. All of that design and everything on the steeple uh, around the clock face is all the way up. It's all pressed metal um, and it's all seamed uh, together. But anyway, so it's it's the whole building is is a intricate uh, design of roofs and pitches and pieces that are all uh, worn very badly, and so we've done patching and, and have patched it uh, time and time again. The last major patchwork we did was about ten years ago, and we actually used um, these folks here. Uh, this fellow here actually uh, lives out on the east side of the county, uh, near the Allen County line. Um, he moved in here, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, and actually his background is in, uh, uh, and he works in Nashville primarily, does these uh, skyscraper building uh, windows and roof repairs, etc. But anyway, he did a really good job, and I, I think maybe Larry and maybe Marty was already on the court. We've had an exhaustive uh, repair done on the interior of the building, the interior of the roof structure, uh, beams that were, were had moved, and uh, it just did a phenomenal job. And, and uh, that work on the, on the exterior of the roof lasted, has lasted us for about 10 or 11 years. And uh, we asked him to come back and take a look. We've just, we've got leaks, we've got leaks coming in all in the, in the steeple. Again, um, it's pitted. Uh, you know, we could spend, I, I don't even want to say the number out loud, uh, but it would not surprise me if we hired uh, an, an architect or some professional to come in and give us a proposal for really doing what would be a full fledged repair, replacement of the roof on this building, including repairs to the steeple. It wouldn't surprise me if it was a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, in fact, we actually had, and I think I may still have this, um, we actually had David Akins at the time bring somebody in, this is before we got this guy, to look at the steeple. And I think just the steeple um, was, was a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of proposed repairs and, and uh, all of that. Uh, I say all that to say, in uh, 2006, when we had this fellow here do some work last, I think we spent between 10 and 15 thousand dollars and got the the roof uh, dried in, and his work and has been pretty good for about 10 years. So, uh, called him back in. You can see what uh, Bill and I proposed uh, or talked with him about, and then he gave us a very detailed proposal for what to do here. And uh, I would like to get him. Uh, back down here, I mean, I, again, if you all are interested in a far more significant um, capital investment in the building that would involve more than this kind of repair, we can certainly uh, entertain that, but I'm confident, and certainly we'll let Bill speak to it, that if we approach it with this proposal, that this will buy us probably another five or ten years um, and give us more time to think about if we want to tackle a, a major roof replacement project for the building. Um, this, I, I blanked out the pricing because again if you all decided to do something different than accept this proposal, I didn't think it was fair to put those numbers out there um, specifically, but he had actually a number out beside each one of those line items there. Uh, let me just well, that suggest. Answered, that answered my question. Yeah, because yeah. I was sitting yeah. there. We don't have a line that. item on our 
Well, when it, when it gets to the to the list of like upper clock tower roof repair, removal of the remainder of the lights and the roof uh, perfecting, chimney caps, repointing, recoding, and then some of the repair of the rotted beams, each one of those, he gave us a number, but I just blanked those out because again, I didn't want to disclose those numbers publicly and have somebody say, oh, I'll do it for $10 less, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, that, that's that's not this is just a proposal of the scope of the project but we're, we're thinking that this is probably again a ten fifteen thousand dollar total in phases and we wouldn't have to do everything all at once but we've got to get this building uh, dried in we've got some problems in the, especially in the upper floors and if we don't tackle it now we're going to end up having just further deterioration of some of the structural uh, pieces in there. Again, I'll stop with that. I'll, ask, I'll let, let you all ask questions or uh, if you have any, I'll, I'll let Bill just kind of hold his thoughts till, uh, till it's necessary if you all have questions. This, again, uh, under normal terms, except that it's a pretty, pretty uh, complex fix, this would still fall within our, what I would call our normal maintenance. This is not an extraordinary cost. Uh, we, we could spend this much money in a year on maintenance things here, but the scope of this in totality is such that I wanted to make sure that you all uh, were comfortable with this approach versus, again, we could bring in, um, you know, somebody who would design a more permanent fix, but we need to be prepared to step up the game quite a bit. There's a gentleman a lifetime resident right here in Franklin that does roofing work. Copper and all nine yards out of Nashville, Bud Creasy, right there on Broadway. And he's done that all his life. The biggest issue I've had, I've contacted four companies. Three companies won't come because of the height. They don't want to use a crane. This gentleman still brings in ladders. He works off ladders. And uh, I, I had, uh, I don't want to mention their names, but I can give you the names. They were all major roofing companies. I called them, one as far as Indiana. And, oh, yes, sir, we'll be glad to come. And I said, well, this is what I got. Uh, you know, I got a bell tower and a clock tower, and I, said, I got water pouring down through the middle of it. So I know we've got a major problem on a very, very, very top. So, yes, sir, we'll be glad to come. Doesn't call me back. Nobody schedules. You know, so. Well, I thought, and if he'd like to look at it, I mean, I, I, we'd be happy to have and him. And since this guy had known the building, he knew, I mean, he'd been, he'd done the roof before. He'd been up there. Yeah. He'd been all over the place. He knows, he put all the wedges in the beams that were coming loose. I mean, he knows every square inch of the, and it, we got detailed pictures of when he came before. And if you look at his scope of work, it's so detailed. He's going to tell you everything he's going to do. Of course, in the pricing, he said, he's trying to, Go to the extreme, but hopefully it's going to be less. Because uh, the one thing we have to address, we got water coming in, and and uh, if you go up in the bell tower, the, the the timbers that are supporting the bell, there is no telling what that bell tower <coughs> are rotting because the water's coming straight down and landing right on the support. I don't think the bell's going to fall, but it's getting in pretty bad shape. That the main big bolt that holds it in there, the timbers that are holding it, you can take a screwdriver and pry, the, pry it away. So I'm, I'm, I think it's going to have to be addressed. Uh, of course, we've got east stairwell, we've got issues, west stairwell on the walls, we've got issues. Uh, we still have an issue, not on the roof, but in that guttering over here, because all that gutter is made down into the fascia of the roof overhang, and all that's handmade. So all that's going to happen, he's going to look at that. And another issue is the chimneys. We have several chimneys up there, and the, when you go up there and look, the bricks are actually coming apart. And the, you know, the, <coughs> the metal caps that we got on there, there's nothing to hold the metal caps up because the bricks actually coming out from under it. So all this includes fixing that, putting a new coat of aluminum coat, and he still thinks that's the most efficient way of doing it right now. It get a good, he, and he states in there that he uses only certain brands, Dow Corning, you know, great stuff. And and he wants to, of course, he wants to completely redo the top with a new galvanized and then a 
Firestone roofing on top of that roof. This is a uh, again What I would describe this this is a uh, a patch job it's, it's a it's a it's a pretty large scale patch job, but there are uh, Different different contractors I guess that would approach some of these kind of things differently and there aren't as many people who, who want to just patch up and fix as, as who want to just put new something on. And again, I'm open um, to really any, any approach to it. Well, I shouldn't say I'm open to it. I mean, I'm open to your all's direction, but personally, I don't want the county to expend uh, a lot of unnecessary money at this point if we can do an effective patch job. I mean, I do think that at some point, um, you know, some fiscal court will have a major capital challenge here in this building uh, to fix or to replace the roof. I mean, it's can't it can't last forever the way it is. But I do think this is, this approach would give us uh, quite a bit more time to evaluate a, a more permanent solution. Yeah, so could we could we move to approve this and put a cap on the amount of money? Yeah, I mean, for example, we wouldn't exceed the bid limit. I mean, this is this this would be it would have to be under the bid limit anyway, right. or we would have to bid it even if it was in phases. So again, we're not going to exceed that. Again, the, the, these, for example, this recoding of the entire roof. I mean, that's that's essentially once everything is patched, um, putting on what what. I guess we would call a silver dollar or some, you know, the type of roof coating that you put on a on a roof. I think that area, that particular piece alone was about six thousand dollars, mm -hmm. something like that. So, sixty uh, Yeah. So again, that's that's a that's a specific thing that we can know that uh, you know we'll definitely know what that price is. Some of this other stuff, he he said that it would just be more effective, uh, more cost effective to, to bill at, you know, per per hour or something for the work because you don't really know for sure, but we would not allow it to exceed the bill of it. Well, I just didn't know if we could pass a, pass a motion, even though we know we can't exceed the bill limit, bill limit, but can we pass a motion without having to offer us work on something without at least putting some kind of dollar amount in? Y yes and no. I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff all the time here where we spend three or four thousand dollars and I don't come up here and ask you all about it before we do it because we, we just we're doing our normal maintenance stuff and so uh, maybe even more than that that we've done we're not required to vote to do anything not required and that we're going to spend money unless we exceed twenty thousand dollars or we will just simply handle it as a normal process of doing our claims and, and repairs and those kind of things. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just using Bobby's example. I mean, we spent $15,000 on Hobby Dime Reed, and you guys pretty well didn't know it till we see a bill. So it's just, that, that that's not unusual for us to have normal maintenance and expenses that are, but that's a, that's a high number. I mean, we don't normally want to have that kind of money spent that we haven't briefed you guys on that that's coming. Same thing here. I mean, I'm not necessarily, I, I just want your feedback, really. I don't know that we need a motion okay. as long as we don't get up over $20,000, but I just, I wanted some feedback on direction. You know, I don't, I don't want us to do this. And you say, well, God, I wish you'd gone ahead and got an engineer in here and looked at it, and maybe we spend $50,000 or $75,000 and we buy ourselves, you know, more time than what this is going to buy. I, I really just wanted your all's feedback. Um, this gentleman I'm talking about right here in Franklin does the high rises in Nashville, Tennessee. That's what he does. That's what his company does. I'd like to get them down here and just look at it. Yeah, get I'd a be second glad opinion is all. Sure, I'd be if glad. If this to company ends up, that's fine. But I mean, he's he's a lifetime resident too, and I I, I had mentioned this something about it, and he even talked to like the copper roof because I said, you know, that's going to be outrageously high. He says when you get right down to it, it's not considered how long it lasts. But then again. Another issue you're going to have with somebody like that coming in, the, all the air handlers, air conditioner units are on the south wing, and nobody's going to touch that without taking those units off the ceiling, off the roof. They're actually sitting on the roof. Yeah. You're talking about to put a new roof on. Yeah, yeah. To put, they're yeah. going to put copper or something like that. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm no, more than happy having, having, right. having come see us. No, I'm just wanting to different. Yeah. A second opinion is all I'm asking. Right. No, I'm, I'm glad. And I'll call him, and if he says no, then we'll. I'll but anyway, it's, it's more, at this point, I just want you to know what we're talking about doing. Again, it's an approach to uh, the roof that's a different approach than maybe replacing it at this point. But, uh, but I, for those of you who may uh, be on the court, you know, for years to come, and, and, and we don't know, but at some point, this is going to be um, this is going to be a major repair. So, let me. Uh, I'm fine with it. So yeah. Well, just again, I'm just let, letting you guys know we're we're going to have to do something with it pretty soon. Um, There's no action today. You no, no. Well, I mean, again, that. I'm just looking for direction, and you guys are giving me some. Um, we're going to do something. It just we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll explore all of our options and make sure that we've exhausted those. But we're going to we're going to do something on the roof. Uh, now, whoever in, in the near future doing this, we might get them to take a closer look at what we're looking at in terms of expenditure to correct the whole thing. Way it needs to be. We've got another issue. This is totally unrelated to the roof, um, but we've also got uh, uh, our clock. <laughs> the clock mechanism is, uh, and Bill, I know we weren't prepared to talk about that today, but we had we had some people come in and look at that as well. That's another expensive um, repair that is likely to be coming down the pipe. We've had this clock redone, I guess, in our First term, Larry um, spent I don't know, three or four thousand dollars having having major work done to the clock, and um, <coughs> in the last year or so, we've had just continual problems. And I think I may have told you this: the guy who was was like the clock guy that had been working on our clock from all over. He was he worked on clocks all over the southeast. He was from uh, I think Berea. Uh, he, he had a brain aneurysm and died just tragically, suddenly, about a year and a half ago. And he would come every time the clock, the time changed and, and reset the time and do the maintenance. And he didn't show up, at, you know, spring a year ago. And we thought it was odd and we tried to find out. We couldn't reach him and, and found out that he had, he had died just tragically. A young guy, I mean, he was maybe 40s, early 50s. But, but finding people who are specialized in working on these intricate clock systems is also, I mean, you just don't pick up the phone book and call it a clock repair uh, person. So uh, that's another maintenance issue that you need to be prepared for. That uh, we we the bell does not work right now. This the mechanism that causes the bell. Huh? The drive motor for the bell yeah. ringing mechanism is burned out. So uh, as we get inside up there and do some work. In the steeple, we might also be talking about the the clock uh, mechanism as well. So, <clears throat> all right, let's continue on in our financial business. The uh, transfers you've got, uh, Nicole, listed some uh, budget transfers there for you. We'll need a motion to approve the transfers as listed. I just see one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's two. Right. Nine thousand. I just see one on the floor. Well, I mean, there's yeah, there's one. Two, two line, two items. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I'm two sorry. Hours. Move with approve. Motion uh, to approve the budget transfer is listed by Blake. Is there a second? Second by Bobby. Any questions? We'll vote on the motion. Pam. Blake Tarkley. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Jim Henderson. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and the uh, next item is the uh, claims. You see those there. Nicole or I will try to answer any questions if you have any. I uh, see. One question I have. We had a contract with, with another elevator company but we've got a claim from this one we just approved this morning. Yeah, that, that was the repair bill was talking about on this one. Okay. I mean, the contract we have is for just maintenance. 
for the okay. monthly maintenance. It doesn't obligate us to use them for a repair. Okay. And so that's the repair he was talking about to this building. And then the other. That was about, the other company proposed cost to repair this was about seven thousand dollars. Right. So then uh, it's the GPS equipment and planning and zoning. What did we get? Yeah, that was that uh, uh, address. The device oh, that does yeah. that, that uh, GPS. So whenever they go out, street address. It's the most street address when they build build a place. Thank you. Uh, yeah, they used to have a little thing on when James Lee was building this factory. Had a little thing he set in his pickup. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a Joe had the same thing at one time. Device, huh? Joe had that same thing his pickup before. Well, this is like uh, earlier. This looks like a it looks like a, uh, uh, a phaser. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Um, well, Star Trek. Phaser. Very they're good. All these little space. It, it's like and laser pistols. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the other question: Why is there so much difference? It's almost two and a half times as much for a clerk audit as a sheriff audit. Well, this particular audit cycle had, um, I think, that Nicole, you may have to. She may not hear. Somebody yeah, talking to her. Yeah, that's what I was going to see if that uh, was actually. And and chips chips well. Oh, okay, okay. Let me, let me make sure. Nicole, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Mar Marty was asking on the uh, on the audit for the clerk's audit. Yes. That did that ha that had was that that was for chips final settlement audit. Is that what that was? Yeah, the the sheriff's audit was in there at like fifty eight hundred. Yeah. The other one was like thirteen thousand. Yeah, clerk fee audit for this year ending December two thousand fifteen. So that was that was well. So that was Chip's fifteen audit. Yes. That's not actually his final audit then. We haven't got that yet. I mean, that that's not been done. Well, so that was that was the fifteen audit. That that's the description the audit gets at the top mm -hmm. fees. Yeah, we had, he had, she had completed the audit for the for Chip's final for settlement. 16. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she's been working on, isn't it? Yeah. Is that the state auditor's office too? Mm -hmm. Can we can we get a uh, like we did here to get a you gotta do it through the state auditor's oh, office. Do it. That's right. They wanna do they wanna do the clerk's audits and the sheriff's <coughs> audits now. Okay. They used to be different. But they've started doing them all themselves, and I really think that's. I mean, I, I asked the archer's office about it. The sheriff and I talked about this before, and unfortunately, and I mean, it's not the case here. Thank goodness, but you just seem like every time you pick up the paper somewhere and stay in the fee offices, you see something where you know it's just somebody's somebody's abused um, that 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 office, and I think they get honed in on that. And if there starts to be some fiscal court situations, which is a little harder for fiscal courts, we've got so many checks and balances that uh, uh, you know, we have to go by. Sometimes a fee official wouldn't, but you know the, the, the pendulum could swing again the other way. Um, you know, there for a while we had a state auditor, and they they wouldn't even consider having private CPA audits, do county audits back when I first got elected, but. Um, but that may change at some point. It would be nice because if you all remember the uh, last audit that we had done that the state auditor's office did was about $37,000. And then the audit that we got a private CPA firm to do this last year was 13, so. so That's the reason I asked. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more questions. All right. Yeah, got one. Mm -hmm. This is just for my information. Sure. Uh, Western Kentucky, uh, Mesnet. Yes. Is that an annual? Yes, that's, that's the one time uh, year that, that, that's for the weather uh, monitoring monitor system. Yeah, here. I just hadn't seen yeah. that before. That's or a, I missed it. Oh, okay. Kumaru. Mm -hmm. We've had a a uh, arrangement with them for three or four years, four or five years maybe, we, and several times <coughs> in the state. I guess you all have seen those presentations at the judges or at the uh, conferences about those asking for local support. Those were initially done with a uh, 
a federal line item appropriation in the budget through Western back I don't know, 10 years ago, but once those appropriations ran out, they started asking the communities in the state to help yeah, support them. Is that, is that close to the fire station? Oh, okay. Okay, any other questions? Ten, twelve thousand dollars, I think, what they wound up. It's in the cost and put it in, something like that. I can't remember. Where's this at now, Larry? It's on Coomer Road, and you've got 816, take a left on Coomer, and it's up there about all, maybe a quarter of a mile. Oh, okay. It's right past, right past Coomer's Greenville. Oh, okay. Well, this is a very small number, and maybe not even worth mentioning, but I was just curious as to what pet edge is. Pet edge? It's a, uh, it's a company that sells, um, like, animal supplies, but it's been several years ago that um, Ruth, uh, we bought some stainless steel bowls. I mean, it's been a long time ago. I think that last quote was back in, like, 07. So I mean, two years ago, um, but she was needing some more of those bolts okay. for the dogs and animals and such. Good question. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> All right. We're going to move to approve the claim. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Larry, I'm going to remind you to abstain. You told me to remind you if you didn't remember. Who was the second? I'm sorry. Yeah, Bobby. Well, Okay, we'll vote on the motion. Oh. Blake Tarr, please. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Me to abstain. Jim Henderson. Yes. Okay, motion passes. And uh, let's see here. We've got a uh, CD that is up in the... Uh, General Fund, Megan, do you uh, have anything to add to uh, what, what, what you're, are you asking us to renew this one? Yeah. Do we know what the rate is? What's the term? Is it three, three months? months? Three months. I'm sure you're going to get 4%. I hate, I hate renewing a CD that they won't give us an interest rate. Well, they, they will. I mean, we just it's just be able to call and get it at the time. Right? Well, they send something usually after the fact. And I don't mind. I mean, we can just. I mean, she's she shopped some. Um, I mean, it's the rates are ever so slightly up. I mean, it's I'm talking very very small. One percent or something. I like seen. Uh, I, I don't know. This is you can't do it. For, a two-year period, but at South Central Bank, I seen a sign up there that said uh, uh, for like in the next 45 days, but it was a 48-month uh, for uh, two percent. So you know, I don't know. Yeah, we can't go that long. No, no, I know we can't go that long, but it, maybe some of these 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 uh, three months will, may start coming up a little bit. Is ours limited to three months? No, it's just the terms. I mean, it, it, we want to make sure. It depends on the time of the year, too, as to how much. I mean, we're not. Well, because we need the flexibility. Yeah, I mean, we're not. We haven't, thankfully, in the last few years, we've never gotten low enough that it was a concern too bad. But we wouldn't want to get too much money tied up too well, long term. the one for the road fund, which hasn't been that long ago, there was nothing three months that was any better than what we already had. Yeah. So, and work the changing around and yeah. doing all that. I mean, if we went much longer, what's the next break? Sometimes on a little, I mean, six months might be a little bit. But if it's not a lot better, you just kind of, until until we get to the point where rates are enough that it makes a whole lot of difference, you uh, you just hate to have it tied up if for some reason we needed the cash flow, uh, which we shouldn't need, um, I don't think so. Well, I I don't have any opposition to where it's at or anything. I just, I would just like when they send out say something's going to renew. I'd like for them to at least include it <coughs> with it if they, if they would. I don't know if any of them do in a, in a, in a notice, do they? 
that ever say how much the rate's going to be? I don't need it. <laughs> all, all the stuff I have with the banks, I know what the interest rate yeah, is. Yeah, I have to pay it. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason I'm not concerned about interest rates. <laughs> yeah. The only CD I got is in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need a motion to authorize our treasurer to renew the CD at the best terms available. Uh, at the maturity of this one here. How about that? So motion by Marty, second by Larry. We'll vote on the motion, Pam. Chandler and Randolph? Yes. Randolph and Taylor. Hmm? Oh, Taylor and Randolph. Marty Chandler. Chandler and Randolph. Yes. Larry and Randolph. Yes. Who's Taylor? Bobby Hood. Yes. Blake Tarflake. Yes. Jim Henderson. Yes. yes. Thank you. The motion passes. And then uh, you've got the financial statement for February in front of you. I got a motion to approve it subject to audit. Okay, I got a motion to approve the financial statement subject to audit by Larry. Second. Seconded by Bobby. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. And Megan certainly uh, can get into more detail if you need. This does represent uh, eight months, right, of our fiscal year. And uh, as you can see, we're tracking uh, well on uh, our receipts for uh, budget estimates, which is good. When you see parentheses, that's, that's we've received more than what we budgeted in, in receipts side. That's a good thing to see that. Um, so just make sure you understand. Megan, I'll, I'll, at the end back there on the uh, liabilities register, on the page, that's right. It's, uh, I don't know, Look on this side. Uh, 23. Just on, like the jail expansion, it's got an outstanding, but there's not anything on the fire truck or the justice center, is there? Not need to be anything there. Or Sam, that's all done through our software. It's like when you ask about that two million dollars, yeah. it automatically puts that in, and it's just like it's not like a bad thing. That one's the only one that's got outstanding on it, mm -hmm. and now the rest of them do. The, yeah, and it automatically puts it in there. I've asked our software people because it was it puts it in there for both the jail ones. And I just <coughs> kind of walk through that so that it doesn't go on here. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't know why it does that. Okay. So it's just a software yeah, issue. Yeah, it's just something that our software does. Because I don't put in that. There's no number even when I look at it that shows even that number on there. Right. I think when we put that $2.3 million uh, liability on there, we can fix all that for the AOC project. I was talking to the state about that again the other day, and uh, they reminded us that even though the state pays that, that's still technically our debt. So. <laughs> You said yours is showing it on both the deals? My one shows it on one. It was yeah. at the last one. Oh, all the last one. I just, I whited it out. <laughs> you don't see it. I don't see it. That's why it's white white <laughs> there's, there's people in the community that look at this and we start yeah. putting it online. I've had people ask me questions. Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't, she doesn't know why it's showing up for both, you know, for both of those. They're, just, they're somehow tied, you know, they're tied together because they're both jail and want to put it on both. All right. Any other questions? We've got a motion, don't we, Pam? We do. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll vote on the motion, please. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Barney Chandler? Yes. Blake Tarplay? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. All right. Let me uh, <coughs> move into a couple things that I don't think you would have in your... Uh, packet, uh, well, a couple of them I'll close 
session, but I'm going to make sure how late I miss it. We uh, finally got back the, uh, well, not got back, finally got a lease agreement with the uh, administrative office of the courts for our um, drug court building that we have now uh, had the administrative office of the courts occupy since late October. And uh, I have uh, all the emails that were sent back and forth about the uh, uh, getting a uh, lease. And it's, uh, it's always been interesting to me when you read the answers that you get that seem to suggest that um, the uh, answer really is that we, have, we just haven't done anything yet, but they say something like it's illegal or, you know, it's laying on, you know, somebody's desk, and then that's the same answer over and over, and then, you know, um, anyway. So now we got it. And uh, we got it, I guess it came Friday. Didn't it? Yesterday. Oh, just yesterday. Okay, well, that seemed like a long time ago. But um, the original space that we had in the Dunn building was rented um, for $13,200 a year. And that was about uh, 1,200 square feet, I think, something like that. It Essentially, it figured out to be $12 per year per square foot. In the new space that we've renovated in the Bradford building, the uh, space ended up being a little bit more, 1,650 square feet. So the rent uh, actually has increased to $19,800 a year. And so um, I would, I would uh, suggest to you that's a good thing. Although, again, just having gotten this yesterday, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I haven't had Sam look over it, but um, the language, as you all know, from AOC is typically non-negotiable, so Take it or leave I it. don't know whether or not it matters whether we agree with the terms. Uh, if you want the money, these are the terms. Uh, the terms in this particular case uh, is that it's uh, from 11-1 uh, of 16. Uh, to 6.30 or 17. So I guess if we didn't like how things were going, we don't have much longer that we'd be in it. Uh, of course, we didn't, we didn't uh, renovate that space for any reason other than to have them uh, in it. It does give us the uh, automatic renewal options for um, um, four extensions of another, of, of another year terms. Etc. Etc. Maintenance repair. I mean, it, it's just not. I don't think it's unusual. It's just the other sheet that we had was a one pager. It had just a one sheet that said, "This is how much we're going to pay you," uh, and it had a line for the AOC person to sign and a place for me to sign. And uh, I should have known that that was not going to be uh, the way they did it anymore. It was 114 counties that have drug court, by the way, and I think that this is probably uh, the first one of these they put out since we are the... Is this retroactive? Will we get it will. Back? It will. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any allowance for increases in the future, like for uh, whatever reason? I mean... You tell it to another end. Yeah. You, you know, any kind of increase? Or is it that amount from now on? Well, it's just that this is just the current terms. Okay. I think in the going forward, we could certainly negotiate um, and we're required to carry the insurance on the building. Mm -hmm. And they pay all the utilities. And no, no, we, we pay all, we all the utilities. That, that, this, this cost is to, includes the utility cost. Okay. Isn't that right, Nicole? She left. That's the way it was before. Okay. We've been paying them. I mean, that's not exactly my question. You don't know what her pay is. You don't know what her pay is. Slip it in there and let them pay you to <laughs> make it even that much better. But, I mean, I think the only, the only real issue is just the right, is the term, uh, what, $12 a foot. Do you know, Sam, I mean, you've seen other leases with the state, probably with other space. Um, I mean, is that, 
Is that a round number that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's that sounds about right, but I mean, as you said, it's an adhesion contract. It's take it or leave it. I mean, it's an increased amount over what we were getting before, so that part, and I mean, I guess it sounds kind of tacky to say it, but uh, you know, we're basically going to get rent on space that was renovated with insurance proceeds. So it's not, we didn't have to pay out the money out of our pocket for this space like we did before. So building, yeah. it's a net for us, at least for a while. And if it starts to get to where if you think about what our custodial cost, or our utility cost, or maintenance costs are exceeding what we're getting, obviously, then that's right. something that we would have a, uh, we did, we'd have to say to them, hey, listen, why don't y'all move out? We'll use it for something else, so. Well, I moved to approve it and authorize you to sign on next yep. three documents. That's pretty cheap. Twenty-five hundred a year is a pretty good shot now. Well, Bobby says it's cheap, so I guess, cheap. I guess it depends on uh, what your perspective is. So <laughs> you include the utilities and everything in that, and how many square feet? Sixteen fifty. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. Well, I don't think you're not going to get any more. No, I mean that's the term. It's the term. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry about, I'm not Bobby. You may, it may be cheap, but that's that's what well, the utility. Do. I mean, I think I saw I'm not last month. I just think it's maybe. Well, I think it might be over fifteen hundred dollars a year. Yeah, the utilities were pretty cheap on. I mean, it's just the electric and gas and water. They pay their phone and everything. Um, and too, part of that utility would be for the back back there that the sheriff and jail used to do with it. Yeah, it's not metered separately. I don't think so. so. You know, um, I'll second this one. Okay, second. Probably a couple hundred a month in rent in uh, utilities would be my guess that we're spending. Maybe maybe 250 on the high side. What you saying is you charge for? Oh yeah. I know some uh, office space that right now of, that's for that's rent. Including the utilities. The last one I saw was like 200 something dollars for the utilities on it. If I remember from my memory, that's, that's what like I said. Yeah, wrong. yeah, that's what I said. Two, two, two fifty. I think would be about the utilities on it. Minus so. that plus the water, and mm -hmm. the gas. That brings that figure way on down there. You're saying two fifty? You thought was just the electric? I thought that's what I thought. I, saw I, don't, I don't think it's that high. That building's all LED uh, lighting and. Uh, well, see, that's what I said. I could be wrong. Yeah. I thought the last one I saw was like two hundred. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess. And it's a, we put in a high efficient uh, heat and, and, and uh, gas uh, furnace. So, but uh, I started to say we, I, there's a. In fact, I, if anybody's looking for some office space, I, there's a fellow that told me he had some office space for rent in the county right now. Uh, and it's a pretty nice office space. It was a lot less than this. Uh, I was surprised, uh, but uh, again, it just depends on what you're looking for and how much square feet. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And we'll vote on the motion, please. Marty Chandler? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. And, gosh, for fear of I think I've left something out. I think I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm done. What reports do you all have? Soil conservation bank with Thursday night six, ag building, all the reports invited. Uh, and then I've got the issue with the water line on Hack Brown Road. It's coming back up. Oh, yeah. They cannot get easement from, a, uh, from the individual, and they're going to need to run it down the water line. But I've talked to Danny. And you know he'll move it as close to the edge of the of the right of way as he can move it. But uh, you know, and I expressed our concern, you know, for road ever widening in the future or anything that you know. And I explained to this to the individual, and he's he understands all that, but he he really needs to get some water to his property. So uh, do we need to? Uh, 
is there paperwork we need to draw, get drawn up for him to sign, or is you know, or, or I just hate to, I hate to lock up anybody out from water. Yeah, or, and what this what Marty's talking about here, if you all will remember, and I, I think we talked about this. Uh, I don't know about the specific one, but we talked about it in general. I think not long ago is, and we really need a more formal policy. <coughs> we don't have it in a really a policy format. But um, was it 04, 03? I can't remember the panel. We, we looked it up. But I guess this came up because we were having a number of people wanting to run private lines in the county right away. And so there was some discussion and the, the court's consensus at the time was that the only way that we would allow a water line to be run in the right of way of the county would be if it would run to the water stand, water district standards, to the, to the same specifications of a, to the standard the Simpson County Water District would then take it over and it would be a public line, not a private line. And so, but that's really all it's saying is it doesn't, it doesn't, and it goes on to say that we, that the property owner would assume that, that there's no liability on the part of the county, blah, blah, blah. And um, the water district does not like to have them in the water, in the right of way of the county road. I mean, they don't want them in our right of way. They would prefer to have an easement on private property. So it's kind of a catch 22. Uh, but but if the water lines put in to the water district specs and the water district will take it over, then you know we we have in the past voted to put it allow it to be put in the right of way. How far does it go? I think he said 500 feet. If it goes in, so it would be an extension of the forwards line. <clears throat> no, he's just wanting to put a private line in. But I told him we would have to talk. You know. That's the reason I wanted to talk. But I mean, he started the four-inch line at the water ditch. He's got to go 500 feet further. Well, I don't know if he's going to do it more. I don't know if he had the intention of doing a four-inch line or what he had had the intention of doing. He told me if he went in this route, it was 500 feet. If he came in from the other route, it was like almost 2,000 feet from the closest water line to his property. So the way I under, the way I, he explained it to me was he was wanting to just tap on them, like put a meter up there and then run a private line to his property. I would not personally want to do that. I'd rather run the, and I will talk to him about it, but I'd rather run a four inch line that 500 feet and have the meter right on my property as I'd have, have a private line in, my, in the ditch. Well, that's, I mean, that's the reason we did this. Cause again, I, and I've told you all this before. Uh, and, and I mean, I'm, I agree. I don't want to, I don't want to feel like that we, you, you, uh, prevent anybody from getting uh, water. And I, there's kind of a difference, in my opinion, in somebody uh, being in a situation and having been in that situation a long time and then they need water versus buying a raw piece of land and not knowing that you don't have public water available and then Kind of one of those uh oh moments where it's like I didn't realize that I didn't have public water here, and uh, Marty and I talked about this because we're both in the same situation. I mean, both both of the houses that we have uh, are on roads that did not have public water when we bought them, and uh, I spent twenty thousand dollars running a public water line, twenty five hundred feet to to get water to my property, and so. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I, but I knew that when I bought the, the property, and but there was a, uh, uh, a situation I think that led to this fiscal court discussion back, like I said, oh three oh four, where uh, it was I told you it was in your district where, where the same situation and a, and a fellow, uh, and it, it was very contentious. I mean, it, because what happened to I me. Mean, and you think about this, if the property owner adjacent to this, and I don't know these people, I don't know any of these people, or who the property owners are, but I mean, if the property owner's not wanting to give permission to run across their property, and then we turn around and let the people run it in the ditch line, 
across them. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that, that creates a situation where who knows what the other people had to do to get water. And I, I don't know the particulars again out there. So that's where it seemed like for us it was a safe place to get to. Was it the only way that we would let people run water lines in the, dis in the ditch would be if they ran them to a public line uh, standard. That way it's for anybody who wants to get on that line. It's not just for the benefit of that one person. So if somebody else across the road, which in this case may be the same property owner, needs water, they can tap that line just like the person that's going to be benefiting first from it. And so uh, I'm hesitant to approve putting a private line in the ditch. Because, yeah, tell you, uh, that's fine, I can tell you. But I mean, that's our policy. I mean, it's not just that I'm, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's our current policy. I don't know what you're talking about. Is there any potential for anybody else wanting to? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. It's, it's a small woods there, so. Have you, Bobby, yeah, you were? Well, what I was thinking about, I know we've done this in the past, but I don't know that we, we might want to start phrasing that, but we <clears throat> require a depth off of the road surface and not just a, a lot of times we'll ask for a certain depth, but we might want to start thinking about taking that depth off the road surface because the ditches, uh, this county, the water company has a line here south of town that we have to watch because it's in the, the bank of the ditch line. And it's not <coughs> much lower than the road surface, actually. You understand that? Oh, yeah, I know and what you're saying. It, it causes us problems. So just to keep that in mind, we might want to start making sure that there's a depth off of the road surface itself just to protect it us. It needs to be three foot below the road surface. Or or well, our, our thing says something about, I mean, the depth. I couldn't remember but, it, but it specifically or... references the Simpson County Water District yeah. standards, yeah. whatever their depth standards are. Uh, and their depth is from the ground where it's at, that's what I'm saying. If you're a four foot or ten foot from the road, it might be three foot deep, but that might only be, that might be the road surface. Too. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. If I'm talking about asphalt if, surface. If the bank, if the bank is like on the other right. side of the ditch is up higher than the road yeah. and you put it three foot, you may not you may only That's be right. you may only be below a foot below the road. Yeah. And if they come back and if you do widen the road or whatever then yeah. they can get in it. In this case point. you're probably talking about they're gonna run the ditch line. So Well I mean are, how, how do you all feel? I mean, because again, we could codify this more right now. I mean it's simply a a, an, a motion that when it's in the books it's that's our that's our our order. Um, I mean, we may need to clarify what we and what we already have say is that any lines run in the ditch have to be run to the Simpson County Water District State. I mean, it says that now, um, but we could further. I think. I mean, I agree with you. I, I think if we're going to have a a line in the ditch, even if it is to water stand, water district standards. That because it's in our ditch, it's not outside of our right of way, that it needs to be below the road depth mm -hmm. by at least that amount. Well, yeah, I'm like you. I think if you're connected to a forest line, you need to put a forest line on the end of it. Hmm. Well, I was connected to a previous line, the water district made me run a four. Well, they would, the water district now will not take anything in less than a four inch. Yeah. And I mean, I ended up having to have some engineering work done and everything. I mean, they, they, because if they're going to maintain it, it's got to be built to their specs, and then it becomes their line, too. I mean, how do we word? How do we word that? Well, I don't know what you might check how your wording is now, but I mean, I would say you would want that line to be if it's in the our right of way that you want at least four feet below the asphalt road surface. Because I think the depth of the water is thirty-six inches. I mean, the water districts. But if it's in the right of way, it's either 36 or 30. That I was thinking was 36 good. inches from the okay. from the dip of the ditch yeah. um, might be a foot below. The, I mean, so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's just change that. For, let's just change that where it says the water district's depth 
the depth is is measured from the road surface and not the not the uh, the ground line. Right. That that would solve that problem. And I'll I'll tell this gentleman to you know contact the board. But we probably need a per. I mean, we need we need a policy where each time we actually have a vote of it in the record that shows that we've approved it, and then that's clearly coordinated. That's that's the thing. So. Do, would you like me to tell him to, to get it, every, a map and uh, what it is, show the four inch line and show the depth and all that? Yeah, I mean, he, well, he'll have, a, he'd have to do that it. for the water district to take it. But I mean, I mean for physical court to approve. Yeah, yeah. Don't you all think? I mean, does anybody disagree? I don't disagree. No, I oh, think I it, you're going to definitely want to be careful on the depth. Yeah. And if, we're, again, private utilities, pri private versus public is the key. I mean, if it's in the right of way. I mean, you all have to know right now, there's some private lines in the in the ditch lines. And we get into them. Because we don't know where they're at. Because they were- the It's almost the top of the ground. They, they were- they were, the ditch. Uh, well, I mean, what happens when you get into them? Who's, whose responsibility are they? Well, I mean, they shouldn't be ours. His, his granddaddy's old place, the end of Sawmill Road, the water meter for it, it's a good, what, two miles? Because they haven't run a county line down to the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After. It's you got to go all the way to the top of Sawmill Road and then all the way back to um, there. It's no, as soon as, as, soon as around, our family did. sold that farm. And, uh, yeah. And there's like six water, water meters. Put water <laughs> there's <laughs> like six water meters. There's like six water meters. One yard. <coughs> you know, all them. No, the county ran a water line down there after after my granddad died. After we sold the farm, so he tried to get it after a while. Right, it was so expensive. So, okay, other other uh, reports. Sam, yes, sir. I uh, appreciate your all's patience. I'm sorry I was unable to make the joint meeting last week. I just had my annual winter conference up in Lexington with my fellow county attorneys and mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep, everything was good. Thank you. Well, executive session. We we do and we do. Yeah. Yes. That's something I forgot to tell Pam about y'all when I talk about just a second. Okay. Uh, a couple of years ago we had a household hazardous waste event collect <coughs> And we actually got a grant money to fund that. We had like 185 people, I think, participated. But I've had some interest in that lately, and I have the grant filled out for the spring of 2018. It has to be turned in this here in the next month. One of the things they ask, though, is that you go ahead and when I submit the grant, I have the approval that whoever would be able to sign that has already has the authority to do it because they have a limited amount of funds and timing so they don't want to allow you know offer one if you're not going to take it um, i would have it filled out for it i asked for sixteen thousand dollars on the grant and we have to have it do a 25 percent matching fund um, last in 2014 i think i asked for fifteen thousand and we ended up spending maybe ten i think we spent 27 of ours, you, you do any kind with labor and all that. Uh, of course, we had to have a line item for it when we did the budget, but we're, we're a year ahead, but the time to apply for it is now. So, if you want to do that, I just would like to be able to say that, I, that we'll accept it and Jim could sign it. And you're the one that would be authorized to sign it. If y'all are open to that, I'm fine with it. Okay. That's not the one that includes tires. No, just the thing, household hazardous. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Barry, you made the motion to authorize the submittal of a grant application for the, uh, what do you call it? What was the? The household hazardous waste yeah. collection. Yeah, that one. And authorize. Uh, what do you say? Me to sign. Did you, did you sign that, Blake? I, th I, th I thought this. I just did. All right, any questions? Pam will vote on the motion, please. Barry Randolph? Yes. Mike Tarkley? Yes. 
Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Jim Henderson? Yes. We uh, do need to go into closed session for a couple of items. Um, the uh, statutes that allow for an exception to open meeting are KRS 61.810, Section 1. Uh, B, discussion uh, on the uh, future acquisition or sale of real property by the public agency, and um, F, discussion or hearing which might lead to the appointment, discipline, or dismissal of an individual employee. So those will be the two exceptions. Mark Marty made the motion. Second by Larry. We'll vote on the motion, Pam. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Black Tarkley. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Jim Henderson. Yes. Okay, we are in closed session.